I am no longer a software engineer at Microsoft, and I'm sure you have a ton of questions. Did I get laid off and I'm now unemployed in desperate need of a paycheck? Did I internally transition to a new role within Microsoft? Or am I now working at a completely new company? To answer all those questions, we have to talk about my journey at Microsoft, the regrets and mistakes I made along the way, and by the end, you'll understand why I'm no longer a Microsoft software engineer. My journey actually started while I was still in college as I was a summer intern at Microsoft. After my internship ends, my recruiter calls me and he says, Hey Brown Tech Daddy, your team decided to give you a full-time return offer. Congrats! And I'm super happy. This was one of my biggest dreams in college to be a full-time software engineer at Microsoft after graduating. But then my recruiter asked me when I'd like to actually start my job. Instead of saying August or September, which is the month that a lot of other college graduates choose, because this would give you two to three months to rest and relax before starting your full-time job, I instead chose June, which means I had less than two weeks to unwind and recover between ending my college career and starting my Microsoft career. This might seem really minor, but it's actually one of my biggest regrets because as soon as I start my full-time job at Microsoft, I'm still mentally burned out from college. For example, on my second day on the job, I'm looking at our code base and it's super complicated, which makes sense. It's Microsoft, obviously the code is going to be elaborate and complex. But in that moment, my heart just sinks. Instead of seeing this as a fun challenge to understand our complex source code, I immediately get super overwhelmed and two thoughts enter my mind. A, I don't feel qualified to be a Microsoft software engineer. And B, I don't think I'll ever truly be happy as a Microsoft software engineer because I don't have a true love for coding. Considering this was only my second day on the job, these were obviously some very heavy, disturbing thoughts that were going through my mind. I didn't know how long I'd be able to last before wanting to quit or worse, getting fired. But I told myself I was being premature and I needed to keep trying and give this job a fair chance. To gain a better understanding of our code base and architecture, I read a bunch of our internal technical documentation. But this was all just too complicated and I was unable to mentally absorb everything. The reason was due to my ineffective learning approach. And this is my second regret, failing to continue my learning mindset from school as a Microsoft employee. You see, when you are reading technical documentation, you need to be rereading it multiple times, analyzing it, and seeing how you can apply it to your current work and projects. This is what we did in school, right? We learned from textbooks and lectures, and we apply this information when working on projects or studying for tests. But I wasn't doing that as a Microsoft employee. I was reading the material once or twice, then a few weeks later, I would forget the information. Which is why, as the weeks go by and by, and I'm assigned more and more work, I find myself getting stuck and not making good progress on my tasks. A lot of times, I ask others for help, but only a few people are willing to take the time to help me out. Others would ghost me because of how busy they are. There are nights when I'd stay up really late, working, trying to get some test case to pass, but it feels like no matter how hard I try, I am just unable to fix that annoying bug. Even my manager is disappointed in my lack of progress. All right, so let's do a quick mental check-in. Overall, I'm not enjoying my job and I am constantly anxious and distressed. So guess what? I decide that I can't take it anymore. During my next one-on-one -on -one meeting with my manager, I gather the courage to tell him that I want to find a new role. The most logical role seemed to be product manager or PM for short, because there are a ton of PM positions available at Microsoft. And I had seen a lot of software engineers transition to becoming PMs. To me, the role seemed very captivating as it requires collaboration with a wide variety of stakeholders like engineers, designers, customers, and you get to strategize and make decisions over a product's features to drive user adoption. My manager initially is sad that I want to leave his team 
and he tries to convince me to stay for a couple of years before transitioning to being a PM. But I tell him that I want to leave now and not wait for several years. So my manager says, all right, fine. I want you to be happy, so I will support you in finding a new job. But there was a little catch. Until I left his team, he said that he wouldn't be able to officially find a new replacement for me. So he wanted me to find a new job as fast as possible. So that way he could hire my replacement faster instead of waiting. That meant I needed to rush. There was a sense of urgency. Every night, I would apply to 10 to 20 jobs before going to sleep. Some companies actually reached out to me and said they wanted to conduct interviews. For this one software company called DocuSign, I made it to the final round interview, and I was so optimistic that they would give me a job offer. But they ended up ghosting me after the final round interview. And after following up with them a few weeks later, they tell me they have decided to go with another candidate. It makes sense, I mean, considering that I have the same mental maturity as a five-year-old, that was honestly a smart decision by them. But I was still heartbroken as I'd already visualized myself getting that dream job. I had to move on, however, and after that, it was back to business as usual. I spend my day working as a Microsoft software engineer, and I spend my evenings applying to companies online. As I apply more and more, a bunch of startups agreed to give me a first round interview. Unfortunately, these interviews didn't go well for two reasons. Reason one, it is a huge red flag that I recently started work as a Microsoft software engineer and already want to transition to becoming a PM. Every time I have an interview, these companies would ask me the exact same question. Hey Brown Tech Daddy, you just started work as a software engineer at Microsoft. Why are you already applying to be a PM at our company? Basically, all these startups don't think I'm a loyal employee, so they think if they hire me, I might leave them in a heartbeat. And there was nothing I could really do or say to prove them wrong. Reason two, I am simply not well prepared for PM interviews. It's very different from entry-level software engineering interviews. Instead of being asked to reverse a linked list or traverse a binary tree, I am asked to design and improve a product and explain what metrics I'd use to analyze the success of a feature. I have never dealt with these sort of questions before, so it's all very new to me. As a result, there was definitely room for improvement in the way I answered these questions. Applying to PM jobs internally at Microsoft also doesn't lead to any positive results. Most hiring managers at Microsoft ignore me as they also see the huge red flag that I recently started work as a software engineer at Microsoft. So they also believe I'm not loyal. Because of this, I feel very hopeless and stuck because I'm just unable to land a PM job offer. To make matters worse, remember, I'm under pressure from my manager to find a new role as soon as possible. One night while having dinner with my parents, my parents asked me if I'd be open to quitting my Microsoft job, going back to college to pursue a master's degree because they believe that this could help me in getting a PM job offer. To which I reply, absolutely not. After my college graduation, I saw a lot of my classmates were able to get entry-level PM jobs without getting a master's degree. So I knew a master's degree wasn't absolutely necessary, I just had to keep trying. And that's when I finally saw an opportunity. One night in bed, I'm scrolling on LinkedIn and this Microsoft hiring manager who works on like a sister team as me, writes a LinkedIn post saying she's looking for early in career product managers to join her team. So I immediately hop on my work laptop and send her an email from my Microsoft email address saying that I'm interested in joining her team. She then reaches out to my manager to see if my manager would be okay with me joining her team. My manager tells her that he has given his approval and so far things are looking pretty good. I'm already getting ahead of myself and fantasizing about getting this dream product manager job and everything being happy and dandy. But then this new hiring manager says, uh, not so fast. You still have to go through three rounds of interviews before I can give you an offer. So I prepare for these interviews knowing that I cannot screw up this opportunity. The interviews ended up being fairly casual, 
And about a week or two after completing these interviews, this hiring manager tells me that she would give me an offer to join her team. Obviously, I accepted the offer. So I now work as a product manager on her team. And I'm still at Microsoft, at least for now. In a few months, that might change. If you're watching this and you have dreams to work as a software engineer at a big tech company, I want you to pursue those dreams. Just because it didn't work out for me doesn't mean there aren't millions of software engineers who genuinely love their job. I just personally wasn't happy and that's my fault. I take full responsibility for any struggles I faced. After hearing my story so far, you're probably wondering, am I happier now that I'm a PM at Microsoft? Do I have any regrets about quitting my software engineering job? I'm still pretty young, so I think it's a little too early to tell. But if you want to find out and follow the rest of my journey, you know what button to click.